one marker. In a 2016 study, Women in the Workplace, done by McKinsey, they reported that 36% of men aspire toward a C-level position versus 18% of women. That means the majority of the population, men and women, don't want to be CEO. Doesn't it make more sense to look at what might be wrong with the job than all the people who don't want it? There were these periods of time where I'd go full steam ahead really certain that I wanted to succeed and move up the ladder, but they were punctuated by periods of doubt. So there was this inner conflict between my identity as a modern, empowered, ambitious woman and this voice which crept in, making me unsure whether I cared about any of it at all. People are diverse by their very nature. We can't increase diversity and solve the gender gap by force-fitting everyone into this narrow mold. We solve it by creating the conditions that allow people to be exactly as they are. I knew that my ambition just looked different. I knew it wasn't weakness. I knew I was strong and that I could have just as big of an impact on the business, just in my way. I think it was phenomenal to get some perspective from a fellow woman coming from Silicon Valley. In my personal work experience, that has been a struggle. How to navigate as a successful woman in really a boys club. Lean In is a battle cry for women to be more ambitious and assertive. I mean, essentially, it pins the blame for the gender gap on women and offers a prescription for how to behave more like men. Whereas in my lectures, I blamed our institutions, which were designed by men a couple hundred years ago in the industrial age and haven't changed since, even though the entire fabric of our economy has changed and the entire composition of the workforce. If we're trying to encourage a diverse set of leaders, shouldn't we have a diverse set of rewards? Good performance is sometimes really hard to detect. What do we use to judge who's doing a good job? Well, we end up using these proxy behaviors. Behaviors like aggression, dominance, assertiveness. These are very visible behaviors. And they're behaviors that correlate highly with strength and men. So they don't necessarily correlate with competence. Though, there was no mention of any positive aspect of a female style of communication. And after a while, it felt like you didn't even want to admit you speak like a girl, like shame, like don't be so you or you'll never succeed. Um, I'm thrilled to see this point of view getting put out there because I can't tell you how many women in business conferences and panels I've been to where it's just really about fixing the women. I think I've been a little bit overwhelmed by the talk of women and feminism and so to hear a perspective that is encouraging where we're already at and to live into those strengths and to be thankful for them and rather than try to suppress them and go away from that, I think that was really encouraging for me and powerful. Prescriptions for female success hinge on us acting more like men, which is not only insulting, but wrong-headed, because the gender gap is not caused by dysfunctional women, but a highly dysfunctional system. I am gonna close with a quote that I used to open the book. It's by G.D. Anderson, and it's, feminism is not about making women stronger. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world perceives that strength.